Hi guys, and welcome to a new video on Sonal's life. Now, as you can see, aside from my new hair, which obviously is very different, there is something a little bit different about this video today. And I don't know whether you noticed, but we have two very special guests. Two guests that, I mean, I, hopefully you'll know if you watch my channel, but I'll let them introduce themselves. Hey, I'm El Fantasma. What's up? I am Hikaleo, and we are in the Gorillas of Destiny. So obviously we are here with the strong tag team champions. Yeah, but Hikaleo and ELP. And we are literally on the road to Wrestle Kingdom. So it's the perfect time to get the World Tag League finalists speaking to us. So just first thing, how are you guys? You've had a very long World Tag League. You've had a bit of a break. We've got Wrestle Kingdom New Year's Dash coming. How are you guys feeling? I'm so Exhausted. Tired. Yes. I'm always tired. How has it been, obviously? Like, how was the tournament in general? I feel like it was very long. We can talk about it. But just generally, how were your feelings about everything that happened? Uh, it was great. I think we both started to gel more as tag teams. We were, we were put together last minute. And I think that tag league helped us gel and complement each other more. But exhausted is a key word, you know, tired, like ELP said. Yeah, I don't know how Tanahashi's never tired because I'm always fucking tired. <laughs> uh, but you picked up on this, so you you were very last minute. Like it's very, I would say it's it's an odd pairing, but it wasn't something that people expected. But I know that for me, people in the crowds, you were like the standouts. You were a team that surprised everyone. Now, why do you think you two work so well together? Because your styles are very different. And um, the way you came to New Japan was very different. So, like, ELP started in the junior division. And um, Hikaleo went from, like, started in Bullet Club. That's where you were with your brothers. Why does this team work so well? Because, honestly, I think it is probably one of the most favorite teams right now. Well, we both like lemon sours and eating yakiniku. So, it really helps. I think we're just really mentally on the same page. And yakitori. And Yakitori, we'll go to Tori Kizoku and smash some chicken sticks, baby. Let's go. Yeah, no, it definitely, I mean, we teamed up together in RevPro years ago. Um, but I don't think either of us were expecting to be paired up as a tag team. And uh, I think our first tag match together in Japan, we beat the War Dogs for the strong tag team titles, which I don't think anyone expected. And then we went straight into uh, World Tag League, where we came first and then got to the finals and then uh, ended up losing in the finals. But I don't think anybody expected us to get that far. I don't think neither of us did either. I think, too, like ELP is so over already. And when he put, like you said, we're totally different wrestlers. But when he put us together, you have me, who was just so stone-faced and was like one-dimensional. He have ELP who's just wild, flamboyant, does everything crazy. And he put us together and you see how we're gelling and you see how he's like making me do the Burton Ernie. And then, you know, it's like I'm slowly converting to his style. Now we were uh, the Christmas elves, you know, bringing holiday cheer to Japan. And it's just, I don't think people would have expected that from me. And I think just the pairing of us doing it and making it work too, like, both inside the ring and outside and people are just enjoying it's it's heartwarming we're interacting with the crowd we're embracing them we're loving them it's just the all around we're having fun yeah people can feel that yeah and, we're having fun they're having fun that's what i said and you touched upon and i actually had this written down your christmas outfits at the press conference now we've seen over the years and times there's quite a lot of really big bold outfits for press conferences what where did the idea come from but for you to dress as elves and to get jado as father christmas yeah well the first one came for halloween because we had the press conference in las vegas so i got let's just do something silly and we ended up going with bert and ernie uh and then we didn't even know we were going to have a press conference until we were on the super junior tag or on world tag league so we didn't really bring any nice clothes. And I was like, well, why don't we do something silly again? And it's going to be Christmas time. So 
let's be little Christmas elves and give out free little presents to all the fans. And, you know, they'll love that. We'll love that. And then it was Giotto's idea to, to wear a Santa hat and beard. And he came out as Santa. And we're like, oh, this is, you know, we're having fun. The people are having fun. Everyone's having fun. It's contagious. It was different. It was a different conference too. Like it wasn't your typical, everyone dresses nice and there's a serious press conference. I think it was really enjoyable for everybody because it was just a whole different entertainment. Are yeah, there's, no, like there's no bad blood between us and Bishamon. You know, we respect them. They're one hell of a dominant tag team. We're the new up and coming, fastest rising tag team. They kind of respect how fast we've climbed. We respect where they're from. So, you know, it's, you, get, you get to have a little more fun with this one. It's not, not a heated, bad blood. And you touch upon Bishamon. And obviously, you face them on the first night of World Tag League. You face them in the finals of World Tag League, and now you've got them from Wrestle Kingdom. And you mentioned like you've got mutual respect for them, and obviously, like you said, they're the tag team champions, your tag team champions. So, sort of, how do you think that your approach and sort of your outlook on Bishamon changed from the different matches, from the two matches that you had? Because obviously, you won the first one, and then they won the second. How do you think that's going to impact you going forward to Wrestle Kingdom? We can beat them. And we know that they can beat us. We know they can beat us in long matches, but we have the advantage maybe in shorter matches because we have more stamina and, you know, fast paced uh, agility. So we're definitely going to lean towards a faster, high pace match. But uh, the way it kind of feels to us is that th they're the champions, we're the champions. We've each won one game. Now we're heading into overtime. This is sudden death. Whoever wins this next match, you know, wins the playoffs, wins the series, wins both belts and leaves on the biggest stage as the winners. So, you know, it's it's not the most exciting story, but it's one that makes sense. And, uh, you know, you can't deny that the first two matches were great. And I don't think anyone is even doubting that this third one isn't going to be great. It's just what kind of match is it going to be? And I don't think we're going to find out until we get inside the Tokyo Dome. And you, you actually touched upon that saying your first two matches good. Now, for many people, including myself, your World Tag League final match was probably one of the best tag matches of the entire year. And it was phenomenal. So how how do you prepare? So going off such like a huge match that everyone loved, how do you go about preparing for a team that you know so well but on the grandest stage of Tokyo Dome, because obviously that is worlds away from the other stages. For starters, um, we're not going to bring out a table. I won't be bringing out a table this time because two times in a row now I brought a table and I've been put through a table two times in a row. So we're Why not smart, make it lucky number choices. three? I will not be betting that. I want to uh, bring out a ladder and make him jump off a ladder this time. No more top rope. He's see, jumping off is... the ladder. He pushes the boundaries. He makes me do stuff. Like you when I came no off the tables. top rope. Yeah. You say no tables. He also goes like no tables, but we'll bring out a ladder instead. Yeah, like remember, I came off the top rope, something I've never done before. And I, I would have never done if it wasn't for ELP. But yeah, going into the rest of Kingdom, it's just a whole different mindset as well. Uh yeah. like you said, 40 minutes. What else? there there's always gonna be something we can find by looking back at the tapes from the first uh Corican show to the last the finale um there's always little stuff we can tweak we can manage to hit this time or we can manage for them to miss this time that's all it is just studying the tapes and bringing in new move sets or trying new things that we've had planned that we didn't get to use i think that's just something we can bring to the grander stage at tokyo dome and i guess as a new team you also have i guess the element of surprise compared to bishamon because bishamon have been a team for years and you almost get more you can watch more of their matches. Do you feel like that gives you advantage, sort of the unexpected? Because like you said, you're going to look back at your matches and bring out new things that you've never done and that no one's seen. Uh, I think that's a good way to put it. We definitely, you know, you know when we're on World Tally, we watch everyone else's matches before and after our shows. And when we get back to the hotel, we kind of make sure we're paying attention to what everyone else is doing. But, you know, they're... They're just so good at what they do, Bishamon, that it, it's it's hard. And, you know, maybe we have the advantage that we have some stuff that they're not really used to, but they have the consistency that every time they go for their, their moves, they have 
they have that experience that they're more likely to, to nail those moves. And, you know, I think going into tag league, all four of us weren't at a hundred percent. We were all walking in about 60% absolutely battered from that tour. So uh, I think we're all going to be feeling a lot better heading into Wrestle Kingdom, which is exciting. Uh, but yeah, like we know they're going to hit hard. They know that he's unstoppable. They know I got that speed and agility, uh, you know, and basically it's going to come down to who makes the first mistake first. And we hope it, that it's them, or we hope that we can surprise them with something. Mm -hmm. Cause you know, I, I, I really feel we're going to have the Tokyo Dome on our side and uh, it's pretty crazy as foreigners to have the home field advantage in Japan inside the Tokyo Dome against such a beloved team as Vishamon. It's not even like they're bad guys or anything. But, uh, you yeah, know, I think I think the atmosphere is going to be electric in there, and that's what I'm looking forward to. And you touched upon having, obviously, the support of it. Now, obviously, you were both former Bullet Club, and you made the move, so obviously went to G.O.D., what is the what is the main difference that you feel like apart from the crowd, the difference between being in that big bullet club banner to being in God, which is under Huntai? Like, how do you feel? Like, except obviously the crowds. To be fair, I think especially like ELP, the crowds were loving you even in Bullet Club. There were so many ELP shirts. But what do you think the main difference has been for both of you moving from Bullet Club to just being in God? I think more interaction with the fans. Uh, as as my part goes, I didn't really interact with the fans too much. Being in Bullet Club, even to to this year, I didn't really interact with them. You know, I was so stone faced and one perspective, is going in the ring and and doing my job. But being more with ELP, it's more fan interaction, more embracing them, and you feel the love back too. And so just going into the crowd, high fiving them, giving them the belts. Uh, playing with the kids, it's it's a whole different feeling. You you really do get that feeling of being a good guy, a better guy, than you know cursing someone out, flicking someone off, or you know doing these antics to uh, get get them pissed off. So yeah, from my perspective, it was a lot more welcoming and, and embracing the fans. Yeah, I like doing the fan signings and getting to meet the people who come out and support us after the show and before the show, and you know these are the people who keep new Japan alive by coming out to the shows and, you know, COVID was a real hard time for everybody, but I think the fans deserve more respect and appreciation than the wrestlers do because it's easier to wrestle for 10 minutes in front of a clap crowd than it is to, you know, clap for three hours straight. So I'm, I'm having a great time getting to meet everybody and, you know, just giving them a little love back because they deserve it. And on the topic of fan interaction, so everyone on this channel knows that as well as a wrestling fan, I'm a K-pop fan. And I have noticed that you two <laughs> come out with the finger hearts. Now, where did that come from? Because it's something that I am used to seeing on a daily basis. But when I first saw you guys doing it, it was a bit like, wow, like my two worlds are connecting, like the hearts, the all of that. I saw this, at fans were doing it. Yeah. And I just started researching what it was, and I was like, wow, that's so cool. And it's so like, yeah, it'd be the little cute girls would be doing like this to us. You're like, what the hell yeah. is that? And then I still don't really understand, but it, it's like the bottom of a heart. Yeah. Or it's like these two things are the heart. Uh, either way, how you oh, look so at that it. That but... is actually meant to be the two parts of the heart. Yeah. So, yeah, so like, saw, it, makes, saw, it makes, makes sense. I saw like someone go live, I think on TikTok, and they like, if you, if you do this symbol, it popped up and so the heart was on the bottom so it, like a heart would pop up with it and so that's why not that's why but i was like that's so cool doing it and then when we started doing it um at Rio goku it got like a really really good reaction too like i was like well, that's different and then i found a different one where it's like like that this? one yeah so i was actually going to teach you some different finger hearts that you can do so oh yeah. please so this one is one that i know it's called the cat heart uh, like the little ears. Oh, cat heart. Yeah. Mm, geez, so what? Yeah, this heart is like this. 
Yeah, so put it there so that it looks a bit like ears. <gasps> Whoa! Oh, shit, did you see that? <laughs> so Hikaleo knows Hikaleo's heart oh, so shit. well that it knows. Yeah, I'm doing this Bro, for now. What the on. fuck? Oh, how is yours doing that? I think I got like the, I think it's part of Apple, maybe. God damn, Don't you man, think that's cool. Right? So there's that one. There's also the bunny heart. The bunny? Wow. It's like the bunny ears. Do you got to put your hand more or like this? You can do Four it however forward. you want. Okay. And one, one that is very cute. So these are all ones that I know. It's called the biting heart. So you go. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I've seen that before. <laughs> I like doing that one. I don't know how to do it. So I'm hoping that when I watch some of your next matches, I'm going to see a bit more range of the hearts and I'll go, right, they're the ones that I taught ELP. Yeah, that, that was like you're biting a bullet. Like... It's yeah. called the chew heart, so it's like biting an apple. Uh, so, yeah. There are so many. You could literally change it up and I feel like the crowd would love it. Now, obviously, obviously, like I said, there are going to be some random questions and the hearts are one of them. But I guess you couldn't do this if you weren't with G.O.D. So... I guess what is the dynamic between the GOD members? Because obviously you're not just the five guys. So you, you two, uh, Tamatonga, Tangaloa, and Jado, but you're obviously under the bigger Hontai banner. What what feeling does that have? Like teaming with other guys from like the wider company? Because especially when you're in Bullet Club, there was obviously such a specific group of people that you were wrestling with. It's cool as shit. <laughs> it's cool to team with like Tanahashi sometimes. It's it's cool to team with all these guys you looked at across the ring, and now you get to team with them. Uh, yeah, it's cool. Like I, like you said, with NGOD itself too, it's it's basically just a brotherhood. We're all brothers, you know. EOP's EOP's officially a Tonga now. He's got to get him the passport, and yeah, it's just we all get along outside. We always hang out, go grab dinner, go grab a few drinks. I think that transitions over to the in-ring stuff. Fans feel it. Like we just bounce things off of each other when it, whether we're calling like an audible to change it up. And then outside of GOD, uh, like we've teamed up with like Watto. We've teamed up. It's mainly been with Jado this last tour, but just the different dynamics of the different wrestlers and the possibilities too. Like we haven't teamed up with certain guys. And so I think, yeah, Thomas teamed up with Okada before. It's it's cool. Different, there's different pairings that hasn't been done yet. That hopefully 2024 can bring about. If you could pick one person out of New Japan to bring into God, who would it be? Well, we we were just talking about this, but we had a couple of tag matches with Kevin Knight. You know, he's kind of like the the lone LA Dojo guy right now. That's not in the War Dogs or. You know, I think Kushida's going to TNA, but I think he, we we both think he's got a lot of upside and fits him to a very chill personality. And you know, Geo Geod needs a, a junior heavyweight, mm -hmm. and I think he would uh, he would learn a lot hanging out with us. But uh, you know, we haven't talked about it, but that's something that we thought of instantly would be a, a good fit. So I think we might we might try and make that happen. We'll see. And if you're speaking about Kushida going to TNA, and as much as I like being lighthearted on this channel, we've got to speak about it. So everyone knows me as the person with the headline of Tony Khan hates Sonny, just because I, I have a joke that he takes all the New Japan stars. Now, what are your thoughts, obviously, on the um, foreign wrestlers moving to different um, companies? Obviously, Hikaleo, you mentioned that earlier in the year you had um, talks with WWE and they contacted you. What are your thoughts on that? And how do you think you can fit into this? Obviously, with Osprey leaving. And I guess people say the spot is the top guy Kukujin available. I think anyone could fill it, really. Uh, I've always been a fan, if you look at like sports, and I've always been a fan of the player or the wrestler, the talent, when it comes to where they decide to go. You know, I, I know fans are, get hooked on certain promotions or certain teams. That when a player or talent leaves, they're like, oh, he's a traitor. He traded it on that team. But at the same time, you got to remember that talent, that player has a family. They got a life. They got to do something to make themselves better. And they got to go where they feel will do that justice. And so, 
yeah, I think at the end of the day, uh, I'm always happy for the boys or the girls, uh, wherever they decide to go. Because at the end of the day, it's we're the ones putting our lives on the line inside of that ring. And so, yeah. Was that your question? Uh, yeah, I yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, like, it's like with Will. I mean, Will's yeah. done everything that he can do in New Japan. You know, what? It's only you're only just going to start repeating the same things you've already done. You're not going to grow. I mean, now that he's going to AEW, he gets to go wrestle a whole new roster and have all new dream matches with guys that he hasn't got to wrestle before. Like, that's exciting for him and it's exciting for the fans. And now it's exciting to see who's going to take Will's spot, you know, who's going to step up. And, you know, same with Jay. Jay had main evented Wrestle Kingdom and won the heavyweight title and was a leader of Bullet Club and, you know, flying to Japan is not easy. You know, you don't get paid as good. You kind of go to New Japan to to prove to the world that you're one of the best wrestlers in the world. And, you know, it, whether you accomplish that or not is up to you or or the other factors out of your hands. But, yeah, I think it's exciting when people switch it up. And, you know, who knows who's going to come from AEW to New Japan? You know, all those guys want to come here and prove prove that, you know the fact that we all have working relationships with everybody is good and it keep it keeps things fresh in wrestling which is exciting like who doesn't love a good blockbuster trade in sports or you know trade day or you know things like that and it keeps keeps the uh keeps the guys active and fresh you know i, I certainly don't want to fly to japan for the next 20 years straight that's so hard on your body mm-hmm. But yeah, that's the I thing. think yeah, we're, like, we're, we're having a blast in Japan right now. We don't want to leave yet, but. I think it's the practicalities, isn't it? That um, it's a lot, a lot of travel for a lot of people. And obviously New Japan, it does take a toll on your body. But I guess I think to sort of finish it out, who are your dream opponents? So as well as like, what do you see for the future? If there is one dream match with anyone from New Japan, who would it be? Uh, I really want to wrestle... Okada in that big main event match. We had a good main event in G1, but it was in one of those country towns with the house lights on. And, you know, it wasn't like a, like I think me and Okada in a, at Dominion or something in Osaka Joe Hall would be insane. You know, I really want to wrestle Tanahashi before he has to hang them up. And, you know, I, I've never wrestled Ishii before. I think I could have a, 10 minute banger with Ishii if we're in the same blocks. Yeah, all those greats, everyone he named. It's Okada is definitely one. He's definitely the top one. I, I want to wrestle. I haven't had a chance. I, we, we only locked up once and I was in a strong show. It was like a a tag match. It was me and Jay versus Rocky and Okada. Uh, and Tanahashi, too. A singles match there. One person I wish I got the chance to. I mean, it's still a possibility. And we talked about it before was Osprey. He when he had come to England, we were trying to set something up there, but that was right before the pandemic started. But he's just always got great ideas. We had we locked up before when I was a young boy, and man, he was just he had these great ideas for you know the big man, small man ways. And another person too is you know, one day is ELP, you know. Uh, even though we're on the New same Japan team. Cup, maybe. I, I think that'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, that's we the know next other so we know each other so well. We know each other's moves because we keep calling each other's moves. That yeah. who knows what would happen when we get to wrestle? I know I ain't don't I. I know I don't want none of those chops. Yeah, I'm bringing I'm duck, the table then. I'm, I'm the ducking all those there. chops, bro. That's the thing. You know each other so well. You know the moves you don't want to take. You're like I. I've, I've seen how heavy they are. I'm not having those chops. I've taken a couple of those damn um, uh, super kicks. kicks. Yeah, super yeah. kicks. Yeah, I've taken a couple of those already. Man. Oof, those are nice. Those are now, nice. obviously, just to wrap it up, do you have any messages? This is your time to plug any social media, obviously, Wrestle Kingdom. Obviously, everyone on this channel already knows who you are. We speak about you more than enough. But yeah, just get in your Twitter handles and any messages you've got for fans. Yeah, check out all my social medias. It's under Hiku underscore Leo. If you want to see all the behind the stuff, seeing all the fun that happens in Japan, check out our Patreon or my Patreon patreon.com backslash hikus hub h-i-k-u-s-h-u-b my boy elp is in there every single time uh we got some stuff planned for um tokyo dome uh we'll be trying to set that up soon 
Under well, the- me and greet for everyone flying over to Tokyo. I think that'll be fun. Get to see the people. I think social media is bad for you. I don't want to plug anything. We should all stop using it. Go outside and climb some trees. Or well, but you should all, if you're all going to Japan, you should go to the meet and greet because I have met Hikaleo and I have seen ELP at very loads of shows and it is the best experience ever, even though I am extremely short and I did almost need a chair to match up to Hikaleo's height. <laughs> That's okay. Time. Most people do. But yeah, make sure that you watch Wrestle Kingdom because this match with... ELP and Hikaleo versus Bishamon is going to be amazing. As always, you can follow me on social media at wrestling underscore chat. We are on the road to Wrestle Kingdom, so I will be here with a preview of the show, a review, and obviously everything else that you want from your new favorite New Japan channel. So yeah, from me, from Hikaleo, from ELP, hopefully you had an amazing Christmas, and we'll see you guys soon. Bye! Bye-bye!